Three things to do when people stare at you with bad intentions. So keep watching. The most basic form of human intimidation has to be eye contact. And it's one way that people portray aggressive intent. Simply staring at someone the wrong way can escalate a situation into a violent confrontation straight away. Not only do we all experience it, but it is so common and unfortunately unavoidable. Now it's easy to say, don't get sucked into it. Often, when someone has bad intentions, you have to deal with it. Because to avoid that happy slapper in the street or that guy who just wants to randomly throw a punch just to impress his mates, here's some simple things to deal with that. So the first thing you must do, don't ignore them. Now, I know this sounds counterintuitive, but if you want to de-escalate the situation, then it's important to acknowledge their presence. You're not issuing an open challenge to that person. Acknowledging their presence simply means that you look at them. You should always look at someone that's looking at you. It's always important to make a person who has bad intentions aware that you know that they exist. If that person knows that you are aware of their intentions, then that puts them on a slight disadvantage because basically they can't sucker punch you. So the very fact that you make eye contact with them and let them know that you know that they exist is actually in your favor. Because essentially what you're doing is you're taking control of the situation. If, for example, you choose to ignore that person, what signal are you sending to them? You're potentially sending a signal that you are scared, ill-equipped to deal with the situation, or more importantly, intimidated. So with that said, the best thing to do is to make eye contact with the person. If necessary, smile. And you could even nod. But if you choose to nod, always nod downwards, never upwards. Because upwards gives a sign of arrogance. And it also escalates people with fragile egos, which are the type of people that we're talking about right now. Now, the length of your stare is also crucial. Fleeting glance to acknowledge them is good enough. But a prolonged stare does antagonize the situation because then it's all about intimidation. So what you don't want to do is get stuck in this arms race where you're trying to intimidate someone who's trying to intimidate you. It's a very dangerous game to play. If you're not confident making eye contact with someone, stare at their eyebrows. It gives the perception that you're looking into the eyes. But when you look into the eyebrows, it gives your eyes a deadpan look. It looks like you have no soul. And that can be quite scary. So essentially, you are making eye contact, doing it with a very emotionless stare. Your eyes don't give it away. Another trick is to look dead center, but then you end up being cross-eyed. So that doesn't work either. But without fail, you should make eye contact with someone that's staring at you. Because unfortunately, looking away is taken as a sign of weakness. Whether it's right or wrong, it will always be taken as a sign of weakness by those who wish to intimidate you. Number two, keep an eye on them. This guy is going to be a sucker puncher. So you need to know exactly where he is at any point in time. Looking away and ignoring him is fine at this stage, but what you must do, and this is the key thing, is know where they are within your environment. So if I've walked past this guy, I'll acknowledge him, but then at the same time, I'll also know where he is within the environment and basically what he's doing. And that's easily done. You just use reflections within your environment. If you see a shop window, you look in the shop window and you use that reflection to see what the person's doing. But at the same time, you have some sort of awareness of what's going on around you, especially with this guy that's picked you out in a crowded street or bar with other people. Now, you don't need to get carried away with this. Don't get fixated. That draws attention as well. You'll also appear to lack confidence. Just have a sense of their location. Personally, I always like to pay attention to what they're doing. That's just me, but you could say I'm quite paranoid. I like to look at the bigger picture, what they're doing with their hands, who they're associating with, where they're standing, how many people they're with. All of these factors, I'll take a quick snapshot and move on. Now, it's always good to know if someone's staring at you with bad intentions, are they with other people? Because if they are, you need to identify who those people are. And sometimes you can make the association by dress and proximity. If they're dressed in a very similar manner, and they're within close proximity of each other, there's a good chance that they actually are together. Now, sometimes when the bad guy doesn't get that validation that he needs, he may just simply sucker punch you. Number three is obvious. Don't be there to be sucker punched in the first place. 
But it's not simply a case of walking away. You can't just walk away if someone has bad intentions. Because this is the dude that when you walk away, runs up behind you and sucker punches you in the side of the head. So what you have to do is tactically retreat. Now, I know retreat sounds like the bad word, but what I mean is withdraw from the situation, but have a basic awareness of what's happening around you. You could call it situational awareness in reverse. So I call it leaving tactically. What you do is you walk away but you look over your shoulder. You look at that person through the corner of your eye. You know where they are. Of course, you could use the environment. Any surface that has a reflection allows you to know or monitor where that person is relative to you. But the most important thing is that you leave knowing exactly where they are. And if you paid attention to the second thing to do, you'll know if they've got any mates with them or any buddies that are quite close that might try and cut you off. Being situationally aware will save your skin in a situation where someone has already indicated that they have bad intentions towards you. So given that to be the case, you should extract yourself from the situation as quickly as possible. But do it safely without exposing yourself to more risk and harm, especially to a sucker punch or worse. In this type of situation, don't ever escalate to violence. All you're doing is giving that person validation. You're getting sucked into an ego battle. So what's the takeaway? There's a fine line between giving validation to a person and ensuring your own personal safety. And you have to get the balance right. Now, yes, staring contests are a form of social dominance, but ultimately they reflect the insecurities of the individual themselves. If they don't doubt their own superiority in the social pecking order, they wouldn't feel the need to stare at people with bad intentions. Simply being confident within yourself is enough to avoid these types of ego battles that trigger street fights and as i've said before you learn to fight because you don't have to fight and people that are completely confident in their own ability will never feel the need to step up to the mark especially in an ego battle because you know what it takes to fight and more importantly you know what it takes to inflict and to feel pain so remember if you can't fight don't be triggered but learn to fight so you won't be triggered thanks for watching